What's going on guys, Philip at Trade Genius. All right, in this video, we're gonna cover stock to flow and how that drives Bitcoin's price. So we're gonna get into this article that Plan B wrote on Medium and really went into that whole stock to flow ratio and how it affects price. And he came up with a really cool formula. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna look at how this model has accurately forecasted price, how it compares to other commodities. We're also gonna show you a site where it projects out future Bitcoin price and how you can also plot this on your own trading view charts. All right, so let's dive into this video and check this out. Trade genius. All right guys, so getting into this article, modeling Bitcoin's value is scarcity. So what this basically gets into is how Bitcoin is scarce, right? It's, a, it's the first really digital object that's scarce. Uh, it, it's like silver and gold in that respect, but Unlike silver and gold, you can send it instantly over the internet, radio, satellites. You know, we have the uh, satellite system now that relays the blockchain. So big leap forward uh, in regards to a store of value object. Now, this gets us into the stock to flow ratio. And what that is basically is you take your existing stock. So, you know, let's just say minus the uh, lost Bitcoins and things like that. There's, there's roughly about 17 million or so Bitcoin out there. And you divide that by the flow and the flow is basically how many bitcoins are being created every day so if we're averaging about 10 minute blocks the block rewards are 12 and a half bitcoins per block and that's going to give us about 1800 bitcoins per day so that's the flow so basically you would just take you do this on an annual basis so the existing stockpiles flow is the yearly production and so basically that gives you sf or stock to flow and that's the ratio so to put things into perspective you have gold right uh, if you take the stock and the flow gives you a stock to flow ratio of 62. i know that silver is listed here at 22 that's actually based on this stock number and, and he actually found out that this is inflated so actually the stock to flow ratio is actually a lot lower for silver um, this would be more on par with diamond which is in an updated chart he created and i'll show you that in a little bit the other way to look at this stock to flow is that it would take 62 so if you have a stock to flow ratio of 62 it would take you 62 years of production to make the current amount of stock that's out there for gold so that's that's a one way to wrap your head around what that number means years of production to create the current stock so if you have a very high stock to flow ratio then it typically will translate into a very high market cap and we're going to get into how this modeling works you know bitcoin is very mathematical and it falls right into basically what plays out to be like the physics of markets and market cap if you have a commodity that's in demand and bitcoin's in demand as a store of value primarily and then i think what will come about secondarily as far as utility will be the function of the blockchain as a secure record keeping platform now with existing stock and you were talking about commodities such as palladium platinum gold silver what have you it, commodities have a hard time getting higher stock to flow because as he points out here some as soon as somebody hoards them prices rise production rises okay that's key and then price falls again but see production can't rise with bitcoin because it's fixed we have a fixed rate of inflation we also have a fixed schedule of deflation because the rewards for the miners goes down every four years so you have a very unique now asset that doesn't perform like anything else out there that we've ever seen okay especially things that are acting as a store of value so again bitcoin currently has a stock of about 17.5 million coins and that's going to be an educated guess right because there are a known amount of coins that are missing the first million coins out of the genesis block uh, the satoshi coins we're assuming those aren't ever going to be spent if you take that you supply it by 700,000 per year and bitcoin has a stock to flow ratio of 25 okay so these are the numbers that we're going to be talking about that are going to be driving price and are going to make more sense as we see these future graphs. So because production is fixed, because the supply is fixed, the stock to flow ratio is going to not only catch up with gold on the next halving, it's going to e eclipse it by large amounts on subsequent halvings. The stock to flow ratio is going to hit triple digits. Nothing that we've ever seen that's ever been traded on institutional markets, which Bitcoin is, uh, is now starting to do, has ever seen a stock to flow ratio like what's coming. And that's what's different and that's what's driving these prices. So here's an example of a chart and it kind of shows you how the, the system has built in the rate of inflation or in this case deflation. So, you know, here we are, the block reward is 12 and a half, but notice that the next block reward is six and a half. 
and so on and so forth keeps getting cut in half at every halving. And so the output is mechanically reduced every four years. And that's why the stock to flow ratio starts to skyrocket. So what plan B did was he took data points for gold uh, and silver, which this has changed and, and diamonds more uh, of a comparable market, but it doesn't matter because it, that just changes the stock to flow and the amount of stock. So the, the math is still the same. It's just that instead of silver, diamonds more appropriate stock to flow ratio. But in any, any case, using those as a data point for valuation, he was able to come up with like basically a linear regression of growth based on stock to flow. So what that means is this is kind of like your average, your median, where prices for the commodities will bob up and down around this line as their stock to flow increases or decreases. And so basically on this axis down here, you have your stock to flow. Okay, so gold is a 62, Bitcoin currently around a 25, and Bitcoin is represented by these little dots. Then your market value. So Gold stock to flow of 62, it gives it nearly a $10 trillion market cap. Bitcoin at the next halving is going to be on par with that stock to flow. And you're going to have an implication that it's going to have that kind of market cap. But as you can see, like this linear regression has dictated where price revolves around. So sometimes it gets overbought in the top of bull markets. Sometimes it gets oversold. Out of those bull markets on those pullbacks, this has largely been retail boom and bust cycles. But by and large, we're marching upwards on this trajectory and it's following this stock to flow ratio valuation. So he came up with this formula. This gets a little bit technical, but he's a mathematician. And that's how you basically calculate expected price tied to the stock to flow ratio. And how do you know this works? Well, we can take a look at, he did a chart, 2012 stock to flow model. Basically all this did was take the data from 09 to, to 2012. So the earliest uh, price data to 2012. Look what the model forecasted, okay? Forecasted $10,000 Bitcoin out to 2017, 2018. These are the monthly closes in October. And notice, I mean, look at look at where, how it followed that. So this modeling for Bitcoin as a store of value is is really accurate. I mean, as far as modeling goes, you're not going to, you can't ask for much more than this. And now look what happens. 2019 into 2020, you know, we're heading well above 10,000. Each one of these lines is a $10,000 increment. So we're looking at, you know, 30,000 by the end of 2020 based on, this is just based on the 2009 to 2012 data. And then it, and then 2021, we're hitting $100,000 and that would be like a, a monthly a closing price. So that's how that's why these valuations that we talk about make sense because the amount that Bitcoin A is being accumulated because there's, there's a demand for it and B because there's a deflationary effect in the amount of Bitcoin that gets rewarded every four years to the miners, which in turn gets put into the market. Okay, here's another chart. Bitcoin compared to other commodities relative to their stock to flow valuations. So you have platinum down here. Okay, it has a, a very small stock to flow of 0.4. That means that you can replenish platinum's current stocks in less than a year of production. So that's going to keep the market cap down fairly low. But as we get into things that are, uh, you know, more scarce, palladium has a stock to flow of one. So the current stock of palladium equals production output. And then you have silver. No, now here's the updated silver stock to flow of three. And then you got diamonds at 19, Bitcoin's at 25, and gold's at 54 currently as of today. So the oddball here is is Bitcoin. Okay, so currently undervalued, in, and it has its own linear path. If you just were to just were to chart Bitcoin, but this path does finally intersect up here with the rest of these commodities that have been in existence for a lot longer. So it's all heading toward this. And this, you know, it's like the law of attraction It's going to, Bitcoin is going to catch up to this regression line and we're going to see, and it implies a multi-trillion dollars of market cap. So, you know, where does that money come from? And I think he pointed it out pretty well in his, in his article. Silver, gold countries with negative interest rates. And we're seeing that now. In fact, Europe today, the ECB said, it can all but be assured that there's going to be a rate cut in September, which is going to introduce negative rates. You've got predatory governments, Venezuela, China, Iran, Turkey, billionaires and millionaires hedging against quantitative easing. Uh, you got institutional investors discovering the best performing asset of the last 10 years. Uh, we've shown you the Chinese yuan chart where 
the devaluation is in line with what we're seeing with the move on Bitcoin. So, you know, there's a lot of money and we're talking, this is representative of trillions of dollars. So if they're looking for a safe haven, a place to go escaping negative interest rates, that is the perfect storm for Bitcoin. All right. Now that we have that all being said, again, this is a, this is a chart by digitalic.net. That's the website for this. <clears throat> I'll post it below. Uh, again, at 100 trillion.usd was uh, he's the one that came with that article. You can follow him on Twitter too. But this basically projects out the stock to flow and gives it using that that formula. Okay, that gives it you, these projected values. So these each of these steps represents what the stock to flow would turn into after the halvings. Okay, and then the purple line. So the purple line is basically no using no moving average. Just you know, as of May 2020, all of a sudden the stock to flow jumps. And all of a sudden, you're looking at the fair value for Bitcoin based on that formula of 98,340. And as you can see, Bitcoin's price has met that linear price level every single time. Um, this lower line, probably a more realistic growth curve. Uh, what that does is that uses a, a yearly moving average to smooth out the price swings. As you can see back here, that was a little bit more in line with the price acceleration that we saw into 2017. But knowing now that you have this stock to flow ratio and powering the price moves, okay, because of the scarcity, now people can see, you know, where this thing is headed. And I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see uh, future halvings priced in a little earlier than what we've seen before, especially with more savvy investors, more institutional grade investors. I mean, the guys, the smart guys in the room are seeing this. This is very powerful stuff here, and it's all relative to demand and scarcity, okay? And it's basically like the law of physics with markets. So next halving, this thing is basically going to be six figures, fair value, stock to flow ratio. Next halving, 2024, look at the jump, 1.2 million, almost 1.3 million. And then 2028, when now there's hardly any Bitcoin being rewarded because the reward ratio is down. Look at the fair value, 15 million. Guys, this is big time. And you got to understand what's going on with the world, negative interest rates, things like that, money printing. Look at the central banks. They cannot raise rates. It's disruptive to the system. It's a problem that they created. Now there's going to be this huge demand for a store of wealth that's going to be basically a hedge against inflation. If there was a perfect storm for something, this is it. It's Bitcoin and it's basically the central bank's mistakes over the last couple of decades coming to fruition. And this stock to flow ratio really does model and drive the core price for Bitcoin. It's been true since we've been able to start processing the price data and it's holding true. And I don't see any reason why it doesn't hold true. So I think the big thing for this is gonna be as we head into uh, head out of 2019 and into 2020, uh, that'll be key because that's where our this halving jump is going to be a huge increase in price. And this is where I think I'm really excited to see. I think this is going to be an amazing year next year for the price of Bitcoin, watching it adhere to the law of stock to flow. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, if you want to chart this on your own trading view charts, what you can do is you can actually look up the stock to flow indicator, just going to indicators and type in stock and you'll see stock to flow and you can add it on the chart. And what that'll do, this is a weekly chart, but basically it'll kind of show you based on that calculation uh, using the stock to flow ratio of what like the fair value would be for Bitcoin. Now, if you're looking at Bitcoin from a longer term perspective, I mean, if you're more of like you want to accumulate Bitcoin, obviously accumulating Bitcoin whenever it's below the stock to flow fair value, let's say, that's always just had huge returns. And we just came out of that dip where we were under it. And this line down here is part of this indicator. I just loaded uh, another instance of it and just plotted the stock to flow ratio. So this shows you uh, what the stock to flow ratio is. And this will fluctuate based on the amount of blocks that were produced or confirmed on the network because that indicates how much Bitcoins were being produced. And again, it's relative to hash rate because if more hash rate suddenly comes on the network, you're actually going to cut the uh, block times down uh, until the next difficulty adjustment. And that happens every two weeks. The system adjusts the difficulty of solving block calculations and uh, tries to throttle that to, to every 10 minutes. And that gets updated every two weeks. So you do have some fluctuations in that. And that's why this thing fluctuates. But for the most part, it stays relatively steady. You have basically a stock to flow of around 25 right now with minor fluctuations. 
But that's uh, something you can plot on the chart. Having like a long-term chart to check in on, I think is nice to see, or maybe once a week check in on this and see what fair value currently holds for Bitcoin. But as you can see, every time that jump off those halvings happen, it leads price and then price doesn't take long to catch back up. And then price peaks out, you know, gets a gets ahead of stock to flow, peaks out and, and returns back to stock to flow. For the distance that it does that has been decreasing as seen by the uh, stock to flow multiple, which is also an indicator you can get on training view. Uh, you can see that that's shrinked on each of the last peaks. And so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out on the next um, bull market. But this is a cool way to at least have this reference there for you as far as how price is relative to this. But I think great glaring example of where Bitcoin's a good, you know, good spots for Bitcoin accumulation, no matter where we are in the cycle. I mean, returns are returns and Bitcoin is going to go up and down for a very long time. And I think the ups are going to dwarf the downs. And really, even, you know, we are going to see higher and higher floors. We had a $200 floor, we had a $3,000 floor. You know, we have a $30,000 floor, but each time we're going to see these dips below the stock to flow ratio, those are going to be golden opportunities to leg into Bitcoin as it takes a breather and then moves higher back above it again. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. I thought that showing you guys stock to flow is really going to put some good hard math behind why these valuations are realistic and why they can happen. And watching this happen over the next couple of years as we head into the next halving, I think is going to be extremely exciting. You're going to see a lot of millionaires made just by holding on to this asset as more and more people recognize it as a store of value and basically a logical evolution of, of a store of value is something that is scarce, is immutable and easily transferable. And then behind that will be industrial use cases for the power of the blockchain, which we just have barely even tapped into. So anyway, guys, that's food for thought. Hope that helps. Please hit like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys watching our channel. It really helps us out. I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Trade Genius.